Hello, I'm Bill Ogilvy from the University of Ottawa. We've all been there. We've seen students that have uh, experienced a great deal of difficulty and show anxiety for organic chemistry when they uh, first see it in university. Organic chemistry is a challenging discipline. It can be a difficult subject for students to learn and it's also a difficult subject for professors to teach. It has developed a reputation as being something which is going to be challenging and difficult to understand. Students arrive in class expecting that this discipline will be difficult. At the University of Ottawa, I've heard students tell me that this uh, course is basically the filter for professional schools. And the type of uh, intimidation that you see from students in this course is uh, somewhat, sometimes somewhat surprising. Now, as a beginning instructor, or when I began to teach organic chemistry at the University of Ottawa, I, brought, I knew that students would be intimidated by this course, and I tried to bring some knowledge that I had acquired as a graduate student as, and as a researcher in synthetic organic chemistry, and that was the use of mechanisms to try to understand uh, organic reactions. In research, I had been trained to use mechanism to try to predict organic reactions so that I would be able to ensure that they uh, were carried out in the way that I wanted them to happen, and also to use organic mechanisms to try to understand when things didn't go the way that I wanted them to, to identify byproducts and to try to understand the electron flows that had led to the products that I got. And I thought that by teaching students how to use mechanisms that they could use these same type of tools to uh, allow them to study organic chemistry in a more systematic way and make the discipline a little bit less intimidating. Well, I became frustrated uh, early on in the questions that I got from certain students in the comments and also in the answers on uh, exam questions. And uh, my frustration was that students often seemed to focus on the wrong thing. Uh, instead of focusing on the key part of what they were being asked to look at, things like uh, whether the substrate is primary or secondary or tertiary, the students would often focus on details in the question, the temperature or the solvent or something like this. Discussing with colleagues, I realized that they were experiencing some of the same types of things uh, in that students would often focus on the wrong part or, or something which was not really relevant. In trying to understand this, it became clear that what was happening was that we were overloading the students with information in this course. We were uh, dramatically increasing their, their cognitive load, and this led to a situation where they fell back on the technique of rote memorization. Memorizing things, they were looking for details, they were looking for clues to try to give them an indication of what the answer to the question might be. And in doing so, they would often miss the point. Now why was it that they were having to fall back on these uh, techniques of rote memorization? Uh, it turns out that the way that we traditionally uh, teach organic chemistry makes it an overly complicated discipline. We try to go from something simple to something which is more complex, but in fact we present these students with a lot of information very early on. They're introduced to structure, they're introduced to reactivity, and they're introduced to a variety of different uh, reaction uh, pathways which they have never seen before. And this creates a situation in which this complicated nature of the discipline makes it hard for them to understand, and they fall back on the techniques of rote memorization. Now, uh, it turns out that because of the traditional organization of organic chemistry, we have set up a situation in which we've inadvertently made it more complicated for students to understand. The logical way to organize a curriculum is to start with something which is simple and move towards something which is more complex. And in fact, this is done currently in organic chemistry. We uh, organize our curriculum around something which is simple and we move towards something which is more complex. However, the basis of this simple to complexity type of progression is uh, organic structure. And uh, by organizing from simple structure to more complex structure, we have not actually made the discipline simpler. We have inadvertently created a situation in which organic chemistry is more complex than it has to be.
Yeah, we start with things which are simple structures, alkanes, alkyl halides, alkenes, and then move on up the chain. But uh, it turns out that even though the structures are simple, the reactions that they undergo are not. And by organizing from simple structure towards more complex structure, we've created a situation in which students are introduced to uh, reaction concepts which are very, very complicated early on in their instruction. For example, when you're teaching your students about alkenes, we normally introduce reactions like osmium tetroxide, uh, ozonolysis, or potassium permanganate as part of the instruction. These are complicated reactions for students to understand, and they're seeing these reactions in their second or third month of instruction. By organizing the discipline around structure, we have inadvertently created a situation in which the discipline is more uh, complex than it has to be. Well, is there a better way to do this? Uh, in fact, there is. Uh, instead of organizing the discipline around structure, which if you think about it is actually the easier problem, we can organize the discipline around reactivity. Structures are relatively easy for students to understand. They see these things in high school, they see them in Gen Chem, and uh, they're just a structure. They're something which uh, students can relatively easily assimilate. Organic reactivity is much more difficult for students to understand. It involves abstract ideas like electron movement and reaction arrows, and it can be the tougher problem of the two. So why don't we take the tough problem and break it down into chunks. So we start with uh, simple reaction mechanisms and move towards more complex reaction mechanisms. In doing this, we bring functional groups along for the ride. Students can learn about the functional groups in the structure as we go. This is the easier problem for them to understand. It is more difficult for them to understand mechanism. Let's organize our curriculum around the more difficult problem. Start with simple reactions and move to more complex ones. If we do this, we also provide students with a toolbox to understand and predict chemical reactivity even if they haven't seen it before. Mechanisms can be used as a way of describing what we know happens in a reaction flask, but it turns out that the consistent patterns of electrons flows that we uh, see in different organic structures can be used to predict the reactivity of reactions that we have never uh, seen before. And in fact, this can be an important toolbox uh, for students to use to understand chemical reactivity, much like uh, long division in mathematics. An important part of pointing out uh, or using uh, organic mechanisms as a structure in organic chemistry is to point out the patterns which exist between reactions. This will reduce the uh, cognitive load on students because they don't have to memorize every single reaction if they understand the patterns which relate one reaction to the other. If I know how one uh, reaction set operates, if I know the little details which change from one to the other, I know that whole family of reactions. For example, in the case of base and acid catalysis, uh, we can point out the differences and the similarities between these processes. In the case of base catalysis, we remove a proton, we do something, and then we put the proton back at the end of the reaction. In the case of acid catalysis, we put a proton on, we do the exact same thing, and then at the end we take a proton off. The key electron flows in the reaction are exactly the same. What is different is simply the order of the protonation and deprotonation steps. Patterns like these can help students to better understand what they're doing. They don't have to memorize it as a sequence of four or five different reactions. It's the same reaction with little changes in detail in terms of when the hydrogen comes off or when the hydrogen goes on. In partnership with uh, Nelson Canada, we have worked to create a new textbook which incorporates uh, these ideas, uh, this concept of a mechanistic organization towards uh, curriculum. This textbook is organized around reaction complexity, starting with simple reactions and moving towards uh, more complex ones. And in doing this, we've created a product in which uh, the cognitive load for students is reduced. They don't have to memorize an extreme amount of material early on in the course. They can progress from something which is simple towards something which is more complex. We introduce concepts uh, kind of as needed. Uh, and in this way, the students uh, have a steady amount of material to learn. They don't have to get over a mountain of information early on in the exercise. As part of this, we have Organic Chemware, which is an online uh, tool which is available to understand organic chemistry reactivity. 
This is a series of animations which relates the mechanistic arrows that they see on paper and they see in the textbook to the actual movement of electrons as uh, molecules rearrange themselves in chemical reactions. This uh, illustrates the flow of electrons as electron pairs and uh, uh, bonds in Lewis structures. And it also shows the interplay between uh, organic or uh, molecular orbitals as the electrons move from place to place. And it can be a very valuable tool for understanding and presenting organic chemical reactivity. All of this has uh, resulted in a brand new textbook, Organic Chemistry Mechanistic Patterns, which has been produced by a team of authors. We've been using this approach at the University of Ottawa now for several years, and uh, we've seen a great deal of success with this approach. It renders the discipline into a more systematic type of instruction, and it makes it easier for students to understand and reduces the amount of memorization that we see in the, the students that we have in our classes. I think that you'll find that uh, if you use a similar type of philosophy, that it can uh, simplify your approach to the instruction of organic chemistry. I encourage you to uh, read the book and to think about uh, the organization of organic chemistry around mechanism, from simple mechanism to more complex ones. I think you'll find that the results that uh, you see in your students and in the way that you think about organic chemistry will be very satisfying. Thank you for your time.